You have acquired your first aquarium. Congratulations. First thing you should do is rinse it out with plain water. If it is overly dirty or stained, use salt as an abrasive, but do not use soap. Next, create the substrate. It should be one to one and a half inches deep and consist of pebbles, gravel, sand, or any combination of each. On top of the substrate, place your aquarium safe decorations. This now becomes the aquascape. When filling the aquarium with tap water, it is necessary to add conditioner to remove harmful chemicals present in municipal water systems. Tap water is safe for us, but lethal to fish. Finally, what you have waited for, adding a couple of fish. For the next few days, you will admire your new aquarium and feed your fish daily. Welcome to the great hobby of fish keeping. You are now officially an Aquarius. In order to achieve long-term success in maintaining an aquarium, it is imperative to begin the process known as the nitrogen cycle. In order for aquatic life to live in an aquarium, it is important to rid the aquarium of the continuous output of waste products that accumulate over time. These waste products are essentially all a result of feeding. As with all living things, what goes in must come out. The deterioration of the aquarium's water begins the moment fish are introduced. They immediately begin expelling waste from prior consumed foods. The main component of these waste products is ammonia. Ammonia, even in small concentrations, is extremely toxic to fish. To rid the aquarium of the constant accumulation of ammonia, nature provides unique bacteria that use ammonia as a food source. So aside from keeping fish in your aquarium, you will also be keeping bacteria. You will not see these bacteria, but you will know they are there by maintaining a zero level of ammonia. The first requirement for achieving a well-balanced aquarium is to grow a solid group or colony of these bacteria. These bacteria exist throughout the aquarium, in the water and filter, but the largest concentration will live on and in the substrate, which will become the bacteria bed of the aquarium. As each day goes by, the excess food and the fish waste will begin accumulating in the aquarium, causing a buildup of ammonia. This buildup of ammonia is illustrated here as a change in color of the aquarium water from clear blue to yellow green. The greener the water, the higher the level of ammonia. In your aquarium, you will not actually see the water change color. It is shown here only to demonstrate what is happening. As the ammonia levels increase, you may begin to see the fish showing signs of distress. This is why when going through this cycle, it is best to use strong, hardy, inexpensive fish. Some of the fish may die during this process. Don't remove the dead fish. In fact, bury them into the substrate to encourage faster bacteria growth. As the waste accumulates, the ammonia will rise to its peak level and it may stay there for a week or so. Some of your original fish may survive this toxic soup, but most assuredly, any new fish you try to introduce will perish. 
Then something interesting happens. Notice on the substrate in this animation. Bacteria begins to grow, forming your bacteria colony by feeding on the abundant buffet of ammonia present in the aquarium. The bacteria colony will grow to sufficient size to deplete the water of ammonia, causing the toxic level to subside, making the aquarium ammonia free. The size of the bacteria bed will increase and decrease over time to accommodate the amount of ammonia present in the aquarium. The amount of ammonia present in the aquarium is dependent on how many inhabitants are in the aquarium. This is called the bioload. Increase the bioload, or the number of fish, the bacteria bed increases. Decrease the bioload, and the bacteria bed shrinks. You gotta love Mother Nature. The nitrogen cycle in an aquarium is a multi-stage process and ridding the aquarium of toxic ammonia is stage one. Now proceeding onward to stage two. Remembering about living things, what goes in must come out, those beneficial bacteria that consume the ammonia also release a waste product known as nitrite. Nitrite, although less toxic than ammonia, is also lethal in high levels to fish. As the first colony of bacteria consume ammonia, they begin releasing nitrite into the aquarium. Thankfully, there are other bacteria that can grow in the aquarium, which uses nitrite as a food source. Just like the ammonia reducing process before, the same process repeats only with different bacteria consuming nitrite. This repetitive process is the cycle part of the nitrogen cycle. Let's look again at the animation of the aquarium. As the fish continue to feed and produce ammonia, the first colony of bacteria continues to feed on the ammonia and produce the waste product nitrite. As the nitrite level rises, a second colony of bacteria begins to form, feeding on the accumulating nitrite. When this colony of bacteria is large enough to consume all the nitrite produced, the nitrite level decreases and it usually falls rapidly. With two thriving bacteria colonies in the aquarium, keeping the harmful levels of lethal toxins at bay, you would think we are home free. Almost there. One more stage to go. By the time you get to the third and final stage of the nitrogen cycle, four to six weeks may have passed, and like most new Aquarius, you are frustrated things have taken so long. This stage of the nitrogen cycle deals with the waste product nitrate. Yes, it looks similar to the word nitrite, but nitrate is very different. Nitrate is the waste product produced by the bacteria that consumes nitrite. It is only harmful to fish in very high levels and is rarely fatal. Up to now, Nature has provided a bacterial remedy to combat the toxins produced in an aquarium. In dealing with nitrate, things are a bit different. Dilution is the easiest way to reduce nitrate. Let's say your aquarium has accumulated a level of nitrate of 20 parts per million. 20 parts per million is harmless to fish but as a diligent Aquarius, you want to keep the nitrate level in check by doing a 25% water change. Theoretically, this should lower the nitrate level 25% to 15 parts per million. This is one of the reasons it is advised to do a 25% water change every month. By performing monthly 25% water changes, you accomplish a few things. Aside from lowering the nitrate levels, 
a water change refreshes the entire aquarium. Sort of like when you take a shower. It has no medicinal value, but damn if you don't feel better when you get out. Same for fish. It revitalizes them. For some fish, such as African cichlids, a large water change stimulates breeding by replicating the heavy rains the African rift lakes receive. Monthly water changes are beneficial. Do them regularly particularly if your aquarium is heavily stocked. There is no definitive answer to this question. Each aquarium is unique and the duration of the cycle varies. The size of the aquarium, how many fish are initially introduced, and how many survive the process are factors in determining the length of the cycle. In general, however, it normally takes from four to six weeks to complete the cycling process. Just like jump-starting a dead battery in your car, There are ways you can stimulate bacteria growth in a new aquarium. Introducing bacteria from an established aquarium plants the seeds for a new bacteria colony. This approach is called seeding an aquarium. Acquire a cupful of substrate from an established aquarium. Place the substrate into a mesh media bag and put it in the corner of the new setup. The bacteria in the mesh bag will spread to the substrate of the new aquarium, seeding a new colony of bacteria. This can also be done with a dirty filter pad from an established aquarium. Place the dirty pad into your filter. Soon the bacteria on the pad will multiply and spread throughout the aquarium. Keep this in mind. The substrate or filter pad you receive will be very dirty. That's good. In fact, the dirt and sludge you see contains the bacteria you want. If you feel it necessary to rinse off the substrate or filter pad prior to placing it in your aquarium, fill a bucket with water from your aquarium or dechlorinated tap water and shake off the dirt. Don't over rinse the material. As the dirt is removed, so are the bacteria. There are also commercially available products that will promote bacteria growth. Essentially, these products are bacteria in a bottle. By adding these products over a series of days, bacteria are introduced to a new system. Either of these approaches will help get things started, but it is necessary to proceed slowly and with caution. A good, strong bacteria bed can only be formed over time. This is another of those difficult questions to answer, since in reality there is no definitive answer. In theory, for all around general aquariums, a neutral pH of 7.0 would be the goal. If your tap water is alkaline, as most is, don't fight it. Tailor the fish you keep to those that do best in these conditions. Remember, you are better off with consistent imperfect pH levels than you are with inconsistent perfect pH levels. The ping pong effect of constant adjustments of the pH level and the fluctuations that result from these frequent adjustments do the fish more harm than good. Higher than neutral pH levels affect the toxicity of ammonia. The higher the alkalinity, 
the more toxic ammonia becomes. Ammonia in its pure form is a base or alkaline and having it in your aquarium should raise the pH levels but because of the manner that ammonia is produced in an aquarium and its reaction with water, ammonia actually lowers the pH. The effect of pH on the nitrogen cycle and vice versa is a classic tug of war battle. On one end of the rope is ammonia increasing in toxicity because of the higher than neutral pH of the water it's in. And on the other end of the rope is the pH level wanting to lower because of the increasing ammonia level in the water. In essence, when ammonia levels rise in an aquarium filled with alkaline water, these two forces negate each other during the cycle process. Hopefully, the preceding video about the nitrogen cycle has given you a clearer understanding of the chemical changes that occur in an aquarium. If so, the advantages of owning the measuring device necessary to monitor those frequent changes should be obvious. As with any project, having the right tools makes all the difference. If you frequently visit your local pet shop, they will test your water while you are in the cycle process, but for nothing less than convenience sake, consider purchasing a test kit. After your aquarium cycles and is established a few months, you will not need to be testing your water too often. But should you require diagnosing a sudden problem, having a test kit at your immediate disposal is crucial. Do you have a thermometer in your bathroom medicine cabinet? Or a tire gauge in your car's glove compartment? Both of these items are not used regularly, but good to have around when needed. For this reason alone, investing in your own test kit is a sound idea.